Hi everyone, this is Marcus with DTF Station. In this video, we will guide you on how to operate the Prestige R1 DTF printer with Miro 13 Max, perform end of the day maintenance on the Miro 13 Max, and demonstrate how to press the transfer onto a garment. First, open the DTF Station Pilot software, perform a nozzle check to confirm that all nozzles are functioning properly. Open the printer cover. Check the print start position and adjust it as necessary. The print start position should be close to the media guide to maximize the width of the print area. If the printer has been idle for more than 20 minutes, perform another nozzle check before resuming printing. A poor nozzle check can lead to low print quality. Ensure that you follow all necessary steps to prepare the printer. Refer to our morning procedure for more details or contact DTF station technicians if you cannot achieve a 90% or higher nozzle check pattern. Move the Miro 13 Max to the front of the printer and raise the preheating platen. Ensure the height of the printer and the Miro 13 is appropriate so that the film touches the front preheating platen during printing. If you did not purchase the optional Print Pro table, move the Miro 13 Max out further as needed. Align the plate to the center of the printer bed, making sure to align the preheating platen with the center of the actual film on the printer. Press the down button to release the film into the center position. Ensure that both the printer and the Miro 13 Max are stable. Lock the wheels as needed to prevent any shaking or movement during the printing process. Remove the media wheel from the powder station. Measure the width of the film and lightly tighten the wheel. Avoid over-tightening the screws, as this can bend the rod. During printing, you may need to adjust the wheel position if the film tilts. Press the down button to advance the film to the preheating platen. Open the DigiRip software and select the correct print mode. DTF Station offers two film types, Color Prime Universal and Color Prime Quick Glide. Print modes are designed for these two films, so verify the film you have received and select the appropriate print mode to start importing images. Import images into the active queue by dragging the image, pressing the open button, or clicking on file, and selecting import files. Create copies and rotate images as needed. For effective printing with the Miro 13 Max, we recommend importing at least 100 inch prints or 10 images. For more guides on DigiRip, please refer to the DigiRip tutorial videos in our Quick Start Guide. Press the print job icon to start printing.
if you see an error message on Digirip or no jobs are appearing in the pilot software, double check the queue properties to ensure that the TCP IP is set correctly to 127.0.0.1. If no error message appears on Digirip, but the printer does not start printing, check the pilot software error log for any errors. For example, if the printer cover is open, close it. For more troubleshooting guides, refer to our troubleshooting videos in the Quick Start Guide or contact DTF Station Technical Support. As the printer starts, turn on the power to the Miro 13 Max and ensure that the power cord is properly plugged in. Activate the preheating feature. Start by adjusting the temperature to 50 degrees Celsius and increase as needed. The preheating temperature helps remove humidity and moisture from the film. Increase the temperature only if you notice that the powder residue does not easily come off the film after it passes through the powder station's shaking paddle. Pause the printing process by pressing the pause button when the print reaches the edge of the preheating platen. Feed the film through the Miro 13 Max oven. If you cannot open the oven, unlock the cover on the left and right sides. Use the provided clamps to hold the film down with weight. And gently pull it toward the back. Resume printing by pressing the Resume Pause button again. When the printed image reaches the bottom of the powder station, press Resume or Pause icon button again to pause the printer and attach the media wheel to the grooved part of the powder station. Pull the clamp to the edge of the oven. Close the oven top cover and lock it. Resume printing. And turn on the main heating, purifier, and shaking power. Set the heating temperature to 130 degrees Celsius by default, but you may need to adjust it later based on the film curing conditions, as temperatures vary with different films and environmental conditions. Use the shaking speed control knob to adjust the intensity of the shaking paddle motor. Pour a small amount of powder into the media wheel. When the film reaches the bottom of the powder station, Carefully pull it from the back and check if it is still aligned properly with the preheating platen. As the printer continues to print and create slack, keep pulling the film manually until it reaches the take up reel motor at the back. If enough slack is created, pause the print one last time. Remove the clamps carefully. Feed the film under the tension rod first. Tape it to the take up reel. and turn on the take up reel motor. Resume printing and add more powder to the media wheel as needed, but do not overfill it. Just enough to cover the media wheel rod is optimal. Monitor the take up reel 
to ensure it turns automatically as the film moves down through the powder station. Inside the powder station, there's a media wheel detecting sensor. Whenever this sensor detects the media wheel, it sends a signal to the take-up reel to pull the film. Once the printing process is complete for the day, open the pilot software and check past jobs or review the latest print jobs speed to obtain the linear meters per hour information. Click on the Advance Film button. Set the advancing increment to 300 millimeters, adjust the film feed speed to match the job's linear meters per hour speed, and press forward. This function allows the printer to advance the film at the same speed to ensure proper curing. Feel free to increase the advancing increment as needed with a recommended minimum of 300 to 500 minimum. When the film stops, open the printer cover and use a blade to detach the film from the printer. Slowly feed the prints to the Miro 13 Max. Once the printed film passes through the shaking paddle and enters the oven, turn off or reduce the paddle speed. Deactivate the take-up reel motor and drop the final part of the film into the powder station. Wait at least one to two minutes to cure the last part of the film correctly while holding the film with one hand. Manually turn the take-up reel to pull the film out from the oven. Please note that the film can be very hot, so wear gloves during this last step. Roll the film in slowly to prevent the printed images from sticking to the other side of the film. To start the end of the day maintenance on the Miro 13 Max, first open the main oven chamber and turn off all power except for the main power and purifier. Allow the purifier to run for an additional 5 minutes to cool down and help the oven chamber cool. Once the temperature in the heat chamber decreases, detach the Miro 13 Max from the printer and lower the preheating platen. Turn off the purifier and main power. Brush off any excess powder from the chamber and use a lint-free cloth and isopropyl alcohol to wipe the oven surface. Clean the sides of the oven, as glycerin can collect there. Pay extra attention to the right side of the oven, where the wires connect to the Miro 13 body, to prevent any liquid from pooling in that area. Wipe the top surface of the oven. Close the oven cover. And clean the outer filter cover area. Open the filter cover and inspect all surfaces around the fan to remove any built-up glycerin. Conducting this daily will prolong both the fan's and the filter's lifespan. If maintenance is not performed regularly, the filters can absorb excess glycerin, diminishing their effectiveness in filtering debris and fumes. It is recommended to replace the purifier filter, air vent filter, and fabric top cover monthly. Please contact your DTF station dealer to purchase these and keep extras on hand. Once cleaning is complete, close the top cover. Brush off any powder from the preheating platen, as the powder can stick and cause the film to adhere to the platen. Use isopropyl alcohol to wipe the surface. Remove the media wheel from the powder station 
and clean off any powder residues. If needed, clean the rod with isopropyl alcohol. Brush off excess powder inside the powder station, directing it toward the bottom tray as much as possible. Be sure to clean around the sensor area without scratching the sensor itself. Use a lint-free cloth and isopropyl alcohol to gently wipe the face of the sensor. Remove the bottom powder tray and pour it into a lidded container to protect the powder from air, moisture, and dust. Powders are effective for one year, but keeping them in the shaker can contaminate the powder, causing transfer issues or sticking when rolled into the take-up reel. Store the container in a controlled room with a temperature of around 70 degrees Celsius and humidity below 35%, away from direct sunlight. Keep used powder separate for troubleshooting purposes and mix it gradually with new powder. Insert the media wheel back into the powder station, close the cover, and cover the entire unit with an equipment cover to prevent dust or debris from entering. Once completed, remove the film core and cut the transfers as needed. In this example, we will use the last print to demonstrate pressing the transfer onto a black garment. Turn on the heat press and set the appropriate temperature time and pressure. In this video, we will be using the Prisma Auto Heat Press. Refer to the film packaging for the pressing temperature. For universal film, the typical setting is 150 degrees Celsius for 10 seconds for the first press, with an optional additional 10 seconds for a second press. Thread the t-shirt onto the bottom platen and center the garment. Pre-press the garment for 5 to 10 seconds to check for medium pressure, remove moisture, and flatten the fibers. Place the film onto the pressed garment and cover it with a Teflon sheet to prevent sticking to the upper heat press platen. For quick glide film, use 140 degrees Celsius for a 10 second first press with an optional additional 10 second second press. For universal film, use 150 degrees Celsius for a 10 second first press, followed by an optional second press for 10 seconds. Quick glide film is an instant or hot peel film, meaning you should pull the transfer immediately after pressing. Universal films are warm peel, requiring the film to cool for five seconds or more before slowly peeling off after pressing. The second press is optional for achieving a better hand feel. In this example, we used a Teflon sheet, but you may also use cotton, polyester, canvas, or parchment paper types to achieve a matte finish and softer feel. Pressing with another garment or fabric may also transfer a nice weave to the transfer and help absorb glycerin from the prints. Feel free to experiment with different materials to find the best options for you. For the end of the day printer maintenance, Please refer to the printer maintenance video for more information. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.